Successors of the Gap. B.F. Skinner famously trained rats and came up with behaviorism, which is basically stimulus response. You do this, you know, reward or punishment, and uh, the organism, um, you know, in this case a rat, but, you know, behavioristics apply to humans also. Uh, like I used to be a um, therapist and before that a social worker, and I, I was responsible for doing a lot of behavior plans, which is basically like we're going to reinforce these behaviors, we're going to work on these behaviors, um, you know, in terms of a series of steps. So, you know, behaviorism is, is, is stimulus response, but what that fails to um, uh, take into account, which the cognitive psychologists put in, I'm not saying one school of thought is better than another, but just some of the differences of different, and there's many different schools of thought, is that it's not stimulus response, it's stimulus organism response. It means that there's a gap, there's a choice in between. There's a stimulus, like a lot of people in life have the same stimulus. Maybe someone breaks up with them or they lose their job, God forbid, or, some, or they get an illness. Some people like go into like depression and never come out of it, you know, or take years to come out of it or whatever. Other people just like, yeah, they're down for a day and then they bounce right back. Um, so the the gap is where you make your decision. So it's not only that, that reality impacts you, but reality is mediated by your own self, by your own self, your own personhood, your own consciousness, your own mindset. So something happens to you, you know, you get laid off and then you, you have a chance to interpret it. So some people will interpret it as, you know, my life is over. I lost the job I love or that I need. Other people will say, you know, only if they're extremely growth oriented, um, you know, this is fantastic. Not that it's fantastic that they want to lose their job, but now look, now, now I, now I have the opportunity to take any other job I want or start my own business. Um, you know, so it's kind of like the world has opened up, you know, life has pushed me, you know, into something better, uh, potentially, uh, you know, people that feel that life is always getting better. Like there's one expression I try to live by, which is not always easy, but it's been very powerful to me because the rules that we live by kind of frame our success or failure, I believe. And that is that life is not, life doesn't happen to me. Life happens for me. Because if you believe that the universe, like Gabby Bernstein has a famous book that says, um, uh, the universe uh, has your back. If you believe that that life inherently wants your best interest, it's pushing everyone to grow, but it wants you to grow so you can achieve more and be more and be happier and be more successful. Then if you lose your job, you're kind of like, well, you know, maybe life knows more than I do. Maybe it's time for me. Maybe I was thinking too small. Maybe this is just life's way of showing me I was thinking too small. And I need to think bigger. Maybe, you know, my time has come to become more well-known, more famous, more wealthy. Um, you know, if you have that mindset, then change actually becomes kind of like exciting rather than to be feared. Helen Keller said that life is either a bold adventure or nothing at all. So the other thing in terms of the gap is that you have to give people a gap. What happens is a lot of employers, it's like they try to just put their thumb on people and there's no gap there. There's no choice. People rebel, you know, either overtly or uh, passive aggressively if they're, if they're, you know, can't uh, uh, rebel overtly because there's no choice there. There's no gap. You have to give people a gap, which means that you have to be strong enough to accept that people are going to do it their way. Like they say, one of the top ways to manage or to actually lead, lead is better than manage for results is to just define what the outcome is, you know, do that collaboratively with the person, but then let them achieve the outcome in the way that makes sense to them. Because when people take ownership of their own uh, responsibilities, it's empowering. Then they feel like they're working for themselves. Like I always felt no matter who I was working for, you know, even before I started working for myself, that I was working for myself, even in the company, you know, that empowered me. I felt like I was making my own decisions. Yeah, I was listening to my bosses. But the best bosses, I think, you know, lay out the objectives with you in collaboration so that there's ownership on both sides. But then, you know, kind of give you some latitude to navigate it. You know, that's where trust comes in. Stephen Covey have a, has a famous book, The Speed of Trust. What happens is companies that don't trust people, and you have to be very careful in your hiring because, you know, frankly, some people are more trustworthy than others. It could be a character issue. Um, but if you have a lot of trust in your organization, then you don't need a lot of bureaucracy. Bu bureaucracy kills companies because nothing gets done, because rather than actually getting things done, people just play politics and to try to get things approved, you have to get 10 different signatures, it takes forever. That's why big companies tend to get bogged down sometimes because they become really bureaucratic. If you trust people and trust comes down to choice, that yeah, we're gonna be held accountable for our results, but we're gonna trust people that they are professionals, they know what to do. If they don't know what to do, they'll, they'll figure it out. 
And uh, it's the same thing in relationships. Like if you have your thumb on someone, always like watching them, paranoid, jealous, a person's going to feel like I don't choose to be with this person because I don't really even have a choice. The person is just hovering over me. They don't trust me. They'll, you know, trust, you know, Ronald Reagan fa- famously said, trust but verify. You know, trust, I believe, has to be earned. I don't think it happens on day one. But I do believe it works both ways. If you are more trusting, you get better results uh, from people. But, you know, it has to be earned at the same time. And then if people violate the trust, you can take steps back or whatever, you know, seems reasonable. But you have to live in the gap. You have to, like, allow yourself some time to think when something happens. You know, how do I want to react to this rather than just having a knee-jerk reaction? And you have to give people a gap in order to process it themselves and not have your thumb on them every minute.